so good evening students and uh, so continuation of the bacteria topic and uh, in this the subtopic we are going to deal is that borrelia okay so today we are going to discuss so the back other bacteria is a uh, borrelia okay so first we'll be seeing that and what do you mean by so borrelia okay so it is a sub classification of the spirochetae with a wide opening coils like structure it is and whenever you are staining in the gram stain or the ordinary stains whenever you are using so it looks like a see see a spiral rod like structure okay so i am showing you arrow mark right so it's, uh, it it is looks like a spiral rod like structure it is going to be shows and whenever you are staining in a gram staining technique okay and mostly and the samborella occurs as mouth common cells so means so mostly these type of causes mostly occurs in the oral regions and uh, what are the species of medical concern okay so these borrelia so is going to be divided to three types so that is so borrelia recurrentis and uh, borrelia vincenti and the borrelia so borgifera okay so these three types so these are the three sub bacteria and this borrelia is going to be divided so first it causes a the borrelia recurrentis it causes relapsing fever and second one borrelia vincenti is causing vincens angina and the borrelia borgifera is causing a lyme disease so we are going to deal so in detail regarding of these three types of disorders okay so first we'll seeing that a uh, yes, borrelia recurrentis okay so it is also called as a relapsing fever okay and this uh, relapsing fever and it is mostly occurred due to the anthropod bone infection okay so anthropod bone infection means the anthropod bacteria so that is tick and the body lice okay so louse or the lice same only okay so these two only is going to be affected with the relapsing fever okay so or it is also called as a borrelia recurrentis okay so what is the pathogenesis of this anthropod disease okay so infection occurs when infected arthropod bites okay i will be showing you the classification how it is going to be there and where the incubation period is going to be there for after biting of this anthropod either it is a what is that in tick or the body lice so when it it bites to the person and the incubation period will be starting to 2 to 10 days okay and where the recurrent fever will be there means so where the antigen variations it will show so for example like uh, so fever will be getting a uh, first day and second day it will subsided and the third day it is going to be regains again okay and 3 to 10 days relapses can occur so this like okay so 2 to 10 days and uh, where the incubation period will be fever will stops and again 3 to 10 days relapses and again so it is going to be restarted and uh, you can see the splenomegaly is a uh, common so where the spleen is going to be enlarges and uh, laboratory test we are going to do here means dargon microscope and gemsa or the leishman stain we can do culture and serology and the animal inoculation so this already is in the coach postlets you have seen inoculation right in the rat so that process and culture and serology you have known already and the dark ground microscopy means it is a microscopy dark ground microscopy so in that they are going to visualize the process and gemsa and the leishman stain so means it is a color they are going to add to the so bacteria okay so already you will be having a procedures and in that you are going to uh, deal in detail regarding this procedures okay and next one is a treatment so what is a treatment we can give for this relapsing fever means so tetracycline we can give and uh, chloramphenicol and penicillin erythromycin okay so these are the four category of drugs we can prescribe the further borella recurrent is or it is also called as relapsing fever okay so what is a prophylaxis means so before uh, so getting of disease and uh, what are the prophylaxis you have to maintain so first you have to do control the vectors that is louse and the ticks so you have to control the vectors and or otherwise maintain of good personal hygiene so then you can avoid the ticks and uh, vectors control okay so that is regarding of the Re uh, borella recurrentis okay and where and this borella so once again i am revising what is borella recurrentis okay 
so borella recurrent is nothing else but is a relapsing fever and which was caused by anthropod born infection or the by insect or the body loss okay and the pathogenesis okay infection occurs by the infected person bites and uh, two to ten days it will be there and uh, so again it will be relapses for three to ten days and spinomegaly is common and next laboratory diagnosis is these are and the treatment tetracycline chloramphenicol penicillin erythromycin they are going to give and what is the prophylaxis you have to make means you have to control the vectors and maintaining of the good personal hygiene okay and our second condition is a uh, so vincent angina okay so this uh, vincent's angina so is also called as a yes so it is a borella vincenti okay so it is also called as what borella vincenti okay so this borella vincenti caused by cause of vincent angina so means what is going to be there means so it is also condition is associated with the fuso bacteria means fusiform bacilli okay so means a flagella like structure it is going to be there okay so these also called as a fuso spiro catacosis okay so means um, mainly it is going to be affected to the oral area so here you have seen right yes the teeth and the gingivitis everything that over the gums it is going to be infected okay ketosis means over the area of gums okay so what is a predisposing factor to get these kind of disease means poor oral hygiene and if you have a immunosuppression okay if you don't have a immunity levels so you are going to get these kind of diseases so what is a lab diagnosis you have to get means uh, exudate from the gingival lesions means what you have to do so you have to take the uh, what are the lesions are there you have to collect the sample and you have to so direct demonstration you under the dark ground microscope or maybe the gram straining you have to do so by that gram straining what you can make so you can see the so fusiform rod shape means spiral shape structure so here you are showing a picture right so in this form so you are going to visualize the bacteria of this vincenti angina okay so vincent's angina so what is a culture media so culture media means growth of bacterium so in the serum rich medium so you are going to make the culture okay and incubated in a anaerobic environment so anaerobic means water and where there is no oxygen okay so there you have to do the culture so then we uh, we can see the growth of the bacteria and we can easily visualize the fusiform bacteria in a serum enriched medium okay so what is the treatment means penicillin you can give under metronidazole you can give to control the condition so that is regarding of as vincent's angina okay so vincent's angina means so remember that there is a fuso bacteria so fusiform bacilli and which was mostly so affected with what and the ketosis remember the ketosis and the, that you may see that the inflammation to the gums okay so what is the risk factors poor oral hygiene and the immuno suppression okay and uh, the lab diagnosis and the culture factors and the treatment they can give for the process and what are the profile access you have to give for this patient means and maintaining of an proper oral hygiene is very very important okay and the antiseptic mouth rinses also you can use and uh, to avoid this type of an mouth infections and regular brushing twice a day and morning and uh, night is very important and next we go for the lyme disease okay and this lyme disease okay so is also called as a so borrelia burgdorferi okay so borrelia causative agent is what borrelia burgdorferi so this first case was identifying in the lyme okay that in usa hence the name is called as a lyme diseases okay so see here and how it is going to be there here means so here they are explaining the pathophysiology regarding of the disease condition okay so now the what is the reservoir the deer is a reservoir here so whenever so the borella is going to be affected with the deer okay and uh, tick gets borella when feed deer blood so what is going to be there and where the tick is going to uh, infected with the borella and that that uh, borella is going to be affected to cause the infection to this 
deer so whenever the deer is going to had some food yes and automatically and where and this stick is going to be so have the blood of the deer so automatically and where the tick is going to be infected here okay and how what is the pathogenicity okay so overall the for three classifications uh, the borella so this is only the classification of the pathos pathogenicity of the bacteria so what is going to be there here means the borella borgidofera bacteria is this one okay so what is going to be there here means deer tick is infected by the bacteria okay so when it is infected with the bacteria either it is a male tick or the female tick so so it is going to be infected to the human is infected by bite of the infected tick so whenever this tick so will be so biting the human being so automatically and uh, this uh, human is going to be affected by the male ticks or the female ticks which was infected by the borrelia burgdorferi bacteria okay and uh, so these are the clinical manifestations what you have seen serthima migraines and forms where tick bites okay so whenever tick bites and you are going to so have these kind of process and next and the disseminated infection so disseminated infections means and uh, when the infection enter into your blood and what are the different kinds of disorders you are going to get that is headache fever myalgia means uh, you will be having of a laziness fatigue will be there and the lymphadenopathy and enlargement of the lymph nodes and uh, some of the persistent infections like you can see that and the chronic arthritis inflammation of the bones and the polyneuropathy your nervous system and encephalopathy and your brain okay so your cerebrum is going to be damages okay so persistent for years and you are going to get these kind of persistent infections okay and the clinical manifestations everything already we discussed and the laboratory diagnosis like blood smear examination after jimson staining so here i have explained you right so whenever the jimson stain you are going to add to this bacteria and uh, here the visualization of the bacteria you can see right okay so that you are going to print and dark field microscope means so in the dark field and you are going to visualize a color field that is the bacteria is yes? so this is a bacteria whatever i am showing with aroma right so that bacteria is called dark field microscope and next okay so fontaine staining okay so the fontaine staining means color staining you can see so the bacteria the black color bacteria okay so like this different stainings you can see to visualize the bacteria and next we will go for the fluorescent microscope okay so okay so the fluorescent dyes is going to be added to the so borrelia binds with this some anti antibodies and uh, then we can so fluorescence will be looks like this okay so the culture different kind of culture you are going to get that is so barber stoner kelly's medium and uh, micro aerophilic okay so micro aerophilic means and under the levels of oxygen only so you have to have a culture media of this one okay and how incubation time means 2 weeks or more you can take for the growth of this bacteria so treatment means and the tetracycline you can give penicillin and erythromycin you can give for the bacteria but no vaccines are prescribed for this borella treatment okay so this is regarding of this uh, borella and overall the causes okay so the, this is and the thank you